Now, will you notice, and I drop down to verse 18, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And you'll recall that the Lord Jesus again and again says, I speak what the Father wants me to speak. I've come to do his will, and I'm doing his will. And when he had finished his earthly ministry, and in that great high priestly prayer in the 17th chapter of the Gospel of John, he turned in his final report, and he says, I finished the work thou gavest me to do. I said everything that you wanted me to say. I've said it all. I haven't any more to say. And friends, if God spoke out of heaven at this very moment, he wouldn't say anything that he hadn't already said. He'd just repeat himself because he said all he intends to say to you and me in the person of Christ. That's the reason today that it would be well to let astrology alone. And the idea that you can find out something about your future. May I say to you that it's the tendency of human nature to want to explore the unknown. There is an insatiable desire to probe the mysterious. Man has pioneered in every crevice of the earth today. It was said of Abraham. He went out not knowing whether he went, but God knew where he was going and God was leading him. I guess, though, that the spirit of Columbus is in all of us. Right now, man's engaged in exploring space. He's interested in getting out into new areas. Now, there's this other area in which man has long investigated, and that's time, and that is the mysterious future. What's beyond tomorrow? What does the future hold? All would like to know it, would they not? Back in school, you can remember that there was a class prophet. I very much amused to read about a Texan. He spent time in the penitentiary because of the fact he defrauded, apparently, a lot of farmers out in West Texas and also a few banks, I guess, accumulated several million for himself. The class prophet, I understand in his class, said that he would become an undertaker Believe me, prophets certainly miss it. Today, we see multitudes of people that are anxious about the future. What about tomorrow? Well, the future's a closed door. Memory can take you back into the past, but there's no vehicle to take you into the future. We see written on the door of the future, keep out. Remember that today was tomorrow, only yesterday. And man's limit today is to time and also spades. And to satisfy this insatiable longing, there arose among the heathen. Therefore, these spiritualists, these necromancers, this divination, and God warned his people against it. It was connected with idolatry, it's satanic in origin, and could they tell the future? And this is very interesting. There was a certain degree of accuracy. Now, the oracle at Delphi that the Greeks had, Believe me, they were very much interested in that, and apparently they got a certain amount of accurate information there, but it was satanic. They said Hitler resorted to some sort of a fortune teller. And in Washington today, I'm told that fortune tellers do a land office business, and all you have to do is look in the classified ads, and you find out that there's somebody that's making a very fine living by just speaking of the future. Now, the future is in the area in which man has never been given dominion. Man has no authority for the future. God alone can predict the future, and it belongs to him. And that's the unique character, the Word of God. It moves beyond the present. And the greatest proof to me that the Bible is the Word of God is prophecy. One-fourth, when it was written, was prophecy, and a large portion of that's already been fulfilled. God has prophecies concerning cities and nations and four great world empires. 
Now, under these circumstances, there would arise, of course, false prophets, as there are today. And they wanted the status and the position that belonged to the true prophet of God. Now, how was Israel to protect themselves from false prophets? How can you tell a counterfeit $20 bill? How would you be able to know it? Well, there were false prophets among the people. That's quite evident. And, unfortunately, they would not apply God's rules and regulations whereby they could have told that there was. Over in Jeremiah, he speaks of these false prophets. Jeremiah 14, 14. Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not. Neither have I commanded them, neither spake I unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart. Now, it's easy enough for a prophet to speak of the coming kingdom and centuries in the future. It'd be very easy for him to do that. Jeremiah spoke of the future. Now, how do you know that Jeremiah is accurate? How do you know that he was a true prophet in that day? We can know it today because a great deal of his has been fulfilled. Well, God put down a rule for his people. And here in this 18th chapter, now notice, God says in verse 18, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. Like unto thee, I'll put my words in his mouth. He shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. 